Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the Tech Guy is provided by Cashfly. C A C H E F L Y dot com. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is our Tech Guy podcast. This show originally aired on the Premier Radio Networks, including 170 of the best stations in the U.S., and XM Channel 166 on Sunday, February 19th, 2012. This is episode 850. Enjoy. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here. The Tech Guide. It's time to talk computers, the internet, cell phones, camcorders. What? Camcorders? No. <laughs> and, yeah, we'll talk about them if you really want. MP3 players, home theater, and all that jazz. 8888 Ask Leo is my number. 888-827-5536. I know I said that fast. Let me slow down. Earth, Earth, Earth. 827. Five five three six. Toll free from anywhere inside the U.S. of A. Outside the U.S., please use Skype out. And you can still call. We do have a lot of international listeners because uh, we stream this thing on the internet. That thing, that, that, those internets, they go everywhere. Eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Ask Leo. We spent some time yesterday talking about privacy online. There's another big. It seems like this endless, isn't it? Another big privacy hoorah. This time, Google getting in trouble. At least the Wall Street Journal wants to get in trouble. You know, it's so interesting because the Wall Street Journal, which is run by or owned by News Corp and Rupert Murdoch, really seems to, uh, it's very interesting. If you if you just kind of look at their articles uh, and then uh, don't understand the backstory, it looks like they're fighting the good fight for privacy. And, you know, I, I commend them because privacy, of course, is huge. However... They're doing it in a very sensationalistic and often technically inaccurate way. And the worst thing is, many of the privacy invasions they complain about, they participate in themselves. So if you, uh, if you use, for instance, uh, there are a number of very neat tools. One I would recommend is called Ghostery. You don't have to install this, but trust me, many have, including myself. It's a Firefox extension. When you run it, and you go to a website, it tells you all the little doohickeys and bugs and privacy invasion technologies used by that website. When you put Ghostery on uh, on your Firefox and you go to the Wall Street Journal site, oh my goodness. <laughs> Holy cow. Uh, they got a lot of those. They're kind of talking out of both sides of their mouths. Many of the privacy complaints that they make they participated, and you know what? I don't hold it against them. I completely under, and I'll tell you why. Because we get the internet for free, don't we? Well, you know, you pay for internet service, but there's so many services. Look at Facebook, that we get just a great benefit and boon from Google too. You don't pay Google any money, do you? How do they support themselves? How do they make money? How do they pay for the servers and all the services and the hundreds of thousands of employees and all of that? Well, with advertising. And how do they, uh, how do they sell the advertising? Well, all of them, and this includes the Wall Street Journal, by the way. They are not immune from this. All of them put advertising on their web page by selling demographic information about the audience to the advertisers. When you're on Facebook, you can say, I want to buy... 30 to 40-year-old women who live in the Pacific Northwest, and they'll sell that to you. And how do they know that? Well, because when you go to Facebook, you give them all that information. Facebook's just genius, pure genius. I don't know if Mark Zuckerberg, when he created Facebook, knew this. I would have a feeling he didn't really think about it at first, but then it didn't take him long to realize, oh, man, we got a gold mine here. And it's not just Mark. It's Twitter. It's Facebook. It's it's uh, Google. It's everybody. And and this is kind of the trade. Now I admit it's kind of unwritten, but I think that by now, if, if, certainly if you listen to me, you understand that you're doing that. You're giving them personal information, and you're letting them sell that. Google got in a lot of trouble about a month ago because they changed their private. Actually, they didn't change their privacy policy. But they they just. 
they they, they just said we're going to take inf- we're going to aggregate information from all our properties into a single database, and here's the privacy policy about what we do with that. And they were very clear, I thought, very forthright, and they even put up a a little thing on every one of their pages. If you go there, our privacy policy's changed. This is serious. Don't ignore this. Click here and read it. They really wanted people to read that. They were very upfront about it, more so than most, including yeah, the Wall Street Journal. Now, lately, the latest thing is, and the journal published, uh, I think, in a kind of a sensationalistic headline, Google tracks iPhones. And it's not at, not at all, uh, I mean, I guess it's not technically inaccurate, but it's not, Google's not tracking iPhones. And it's an, it's an interesting kind of case study in, um, in privacy. I, you know, we talked about it a long time yesterday. I, I can give you the short version, which is that Apple has settings uh, default settings on its iOS platform, that's iPhones and iPads, that block advertising cookies. They block them. You may not even know that because they don't tell you. They just do. And uh, and the problem with that, of course, they break the my, the means for companies to make money. So a lot of companies, including Google, use techniques to get around this blocking, well-known, well-publicized techniques to get around the blocking. Google says, we use it for one reason and one reason only so we can if you're a Google Plus user, you can we can it, we can put a plus one button on the ads. That's all. That's all we use it for. Now, me may not believe them, but that's what they say they're using it. I believe them. That's what they say they're using it for. Um, and in order to do that, because of Apple's rest- very restrictive policies, they have to use this technique, this end around. Some say that Apple's policies really aren't about protecting our privacy. They're about protecting Apple's exclusivity on advertising on those platforms. You see, Apple happens to sell ads. Apple happens to know all this information. Apple is, in fact, going to people like Procter & Gamble saying, hey, only we know what our users are doing. Would you like to buy an ad? So you might make the case that it's not that Apple's protecting your privacy. They're protecting their business interests. That changes it a little bit, doesn't it? Now it's not so much Google being the bad guy. Maybe it's a little bit of Apple being the bad guy or being a little maybe disingenuous. And certainly the Wall Street Journal didn't tell the full story. And now I mentioned they're owned by News Corp, by Rupert Murdoch, who hates Google. Did I mention that? He thinks Google steals from him because Google links to articles in his newspapers. See, Rupert Murdoch believes in the paywall. You know, really, Wall Street Journal's double dipping. You can't read the Wall Street Journal you can only see the ads <laughs> if you don't pay for it. Yeah, if you go to the Wall Street Journal's website, you'll 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 see the uh, ads. But if you want to read the full articles, no, then you have to pay. So he's actually he's actually getting money two ways from subscribers and still subscribers see ads, by the way. Uh, and he doesn't like it that uh, Google is uh, has this thing called the free web where you can surf around and read articles. He literally has said they're stealing from me. So I have to think that some of this is Rupert Murdoch would sure like to take Google down a notch. They don't, you don't want to put them out of business. Just take them down a peg. So, so you got to, and so uh, I guess my message, they're twofold. One, you got to read between the lines. There's a lot going on. We're in a battle right now for your hearts and minds and buying dollars. And two, if you put it on the internet, folks, if you're using the internet, People could see what you're doing. <gasps> your internet service provider could see what you're doing. Google could see what you're doing. If you gave Facebook your name, address, and serial number, you better better dang well believe they're selling that to advertisers. Of course they are. That's the trade we make for a great free service. That's how they pay for it. And if you don't like it, you don't have to use the internet. But don't think you can somehow magically, anonymously use the internet. You can't actually with, with great effort try to get around all this, anonymize yourself and block all advertising and all that stuff. But really, if you ask me, when you're doing something like that, you're trying to, in effect, undermine the financial basis of the Internet. When you listen to this radio show, it's free, but there's ads. You understand that. That's how it's paid for. There's some costs to this radio show, some considerable costs, but the ads pay for it. That's how, that is the trade we make. And it doesn't seem to me, you know, it seems a little funny to block all those ads and then say, give me the free stuff. 
Anyway, I'd love to hear what you think about all this. It's a, it's the tech community is going crazy. Eighty eight eighty eight. Ask Leo Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. I want to marry my stalker. Not me, no, no. Don't get the wrong idea. Stalker, whoever you are. 8888-ASK-LEO, that's the phone number. Uh, of course, a lot of news uh, in the in, in, about uh, Apple's new operating system. It's coming out late summer. That means September, of course. Uh, <laughs> I guarantee you. Um uh, maybe it means August 31st. I think it means September. Uh, it's called Mountain Lion. And uh, Apple has said, now we're going to update every year from now on. Because they want to keep up with the uh, iterations of uh, the iPhone and the iPad, which also get updated every year. I have a feeling, I really have a feeling Apple wants to move everything into one space. They dropped the word Mac, you know. It's not Mac OS X anymore. It's just OS X. Why do you think they dropped the word Mac? Same reason they dropped the word computer from the company name. It was Apple Computers until two years ago. Now it's Apple Inc. Not that I'm complaining. I mean, if you're an Apple stockholder, you're pretty darn happy. They went over 500 bucks last week. They are now, according to market valuation, the largest company in the world, beating Exxon, um, worth more than Google and Microsoft combined, added together. So uh, if you're a stockholder, Apple's doing exactly the right thing. They see the, all the profit that's in the iPhone and the iPad, and they're saying, hmm, you know, we should just make it all one mush pile. <laughs> Let's put it all together in one big pile. And that's and I've called it before the iOSification of the Macintosh, and it really is. And in, in a couple of years, really, there'll be nothing to distinguish them. You know, it, Microsoft's doing the same thing with Windows 8. Why have separate operating systems? Just make all one. I see. I disagree with this. I think the hardware should dictate kind of a little bit about the operating system, and that it's okay to have a different operating system for a computer, a desktop computer, than it is from a smartphone. But maybe I'm just old fashioned. I don't know. Hey, you tell me. Eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Ask Leo. That's why we have phones. That's why I take calls because I want to hear what you think. Greg in Truckee, California. Our first call. Hey, Greg Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hey, Leo, how are you doing? I'm well. How's winter been in Truckee? Did you guys ever get any snow? You know, I am I actually pulled off the side of Highway 80 so I could hear you a little bit better. And there is snow, and the ski areas have, you know, plenty of snow to cover everything. But it's a far cry from what we had last year, I'll tell you. Yeah, it's been a weird winter. <laughs> yeah, I've lived here 30 years. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. My grass is dormant, but there's no snow on top of it. So it's, so it's just nutty. Same way back east, although in, and in Europe, it's like uh, frozen tundra. So who knows? I don't understand it. Yeah. Hey, I, I got to tell you, if it all of a sudden sounds like we lost the call, it's because I have an iPhone that it takes a whack on my steering wheel to keep uh, connections so you can hear me. <laughs> hey, I, you know, that's a good trick. I've never tried that. I drop calls on the iPhone every day, but I never tried whacking it on the steering wheel. Well, it's it's a funny deal, which leads me to my question. So you've been talking about the Galaxy Note that, that hit today with the AT&T stores, yeah, right? Yeah, baby. Mm. So I have a bit of a deal breaker, and it has to do with exactly uh, your line of work. I listen to iHeartRadio through the house, and we we have all Apple everything, and including the phones. And so I'm about to take one foot out of the cult and bring in this, this uh, Samsung. Oh. Yep. I can't find anybody to give me the answer if... Um, Can we just all hold hands together and chant right now around Greg because we're losing him. He's slipping, everybody. Apple. How about now? Apple. No, no I wasn't, there? wasn't talking about your phone, just your spirit, my friend. Oh. We're well, losing you to the cult. <laughs> Have you stopped dressing in orange? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm recovering. I'm halfway through the jobs book. <laughs> The, the, the faithful leader was uh, less than uh, hospitable to yeah, me. Yeah, he really was kind of the King Kim Jong-il of Apple, wasn't he? <laughs> Scary yeah. little guy. And still a genius. I Look, I'm not putting him down, and I have Max everywhere. And I'm in your boat where, uh, you know, Apple has really made it fantastic. If you stay in the Apple ecoverse, you know, everything works together. So, for instance, um, you, your issue is what? So, so here's my issue. I listen to iHeartRadio, and I play KFI through the house a, a lot each day, and I do it through the phone. 
and I have an Express and an Extreme for my wireless, and the Express has has a uh, feature. I, I'm assuming yeah. it comes from the Express where I can go to, you know, the music, or I can go to iHeart, and I can select if I want to hear it played through the phone. Right. Or there's through. a little there's a little drop down on iTunes that says, "Don't play this through the speakers. Play this over to the exactly. Express." Yeah, that's still in, that's still in Windows, but it's not on the Samsung. <laughs> so. Um, you, that's not going to change. You're not getting rid of your Macs, right? No, no. But I want to bring the Samsung in. But it's kind of a deal breaker if I have this phone and I can't, I can't patch the iHeart Radio through it and go through the speakers. Oh, in the I house. see what you're saying. So you were playing it off your phone, not off your computer. Exactly. Oh, no, yeah. You can't do that. Oh, well, that's good to know. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, I use for this reason. I use a Sonos system. Sonos uh, is a is a now, it's pricey, but it's fantastic. You get a set. We have six of them in our studio. In every room, there's a Sonos. They're all wireless. You just plug them into the wall, and they have their own wireless network. They don't use Wi-Fi. And that, and and it is true that I can run iHeartRadio on any device, including my Android or iPhone or iPad, uh, using the Sonos software and play it through any of those speakers. You have you've kind of bought into the Mac universe. You're kind of stuck. I'm there exactly. If that's how you do iHeartRadio, now you can play it on your computer, you know, and then send it through the. Right. So you're you're not you're not out of luck there. So, and I guess I could do it with my three other iPhones that I that there I have. You go. Halfway so, dead. So, the, you know, I have to say, if you've been an iPhone user for years, the Galaxy Note will be a mixed bag for you. Uh, I happen to love it. In fact, I've never been so in love with a phone since uh, maybe the, the Google Nexus One, which was my last phone that I thought was just the greatest phone ever. And then the iPhone before that. I, iPhone, look, plenty of credit to Steve and to Apple. The iPhone, it, without it, I don't know if we'd have such good smartphones in general. They broke the ground. They set the standard. I understand why they're suing, because every phone looks like an iPhone. Um, the Galaxy Note is 5.3 inches. It's, gonna, it's available today on AT&T, $300 with a two-year contract. Uh, I bought the unlocked European version, which I am running on the AT&T network. Uh, if you buy it from AT&T, it will use their LTE network as well as their uh, HSPA and HSPA+. It's so big... That some people, you know, Dr. Mom in our chat room says, I can't use it. My hands, I will drop it. I can't reach my hands around it. <laughs> you, you, it's it's linsanity. You have to have the hands of Shaquille O'Neal to hold this thing. But if you, but it, but I'm, a, you know, I'm not a small guy. I can hold it pretty well. I have big fat fingers, so I like a bigger keyboard. I have 40 plus year old eyes, so I like the bigger text. The wild thing about this Galaxy Note is its resolution is twelve eighty by eight hundred. It is right. it is like bigger than my computer screen was three years ago. Oh, but, right. it's it's, it's a, it looks like an awesome device. And I love I was it. watching a review a, a video review on it, and their big thing was you'll look like an idiot if you put it up to your head and use it as a phone. <laughs> I, well, I had to laugh. <laughs> I said that actually. I I said that on on uh, live with Kelly, and they said you can't say that. But uh, I don't think you look like an idiot. I'm putting it against my head right now. It looks a little large, but now I have a giant head. If you have a small head, probably you don't want to do this. And most people nowadays, do we all? I mean, don't we use headsets and Bluetooth and all that? Oh, let me talk a little more. I love this phone. Let me talk a little more about it in just a bit. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Uh, so we were talking about the Galaxy Note, which comes out today on AT&T, the biggest phone. It's so big, uh, it's really, we call it a phablet. It's a phone tablet. Little small for a tablet, little big for a phone. But, you know, this is one of the reasons I do like Android is, you know, Apple calls it fragmentation. I call it choice. There's more than one kind, you know. And if you want a little three-and-a-half-inch screen, you can get it. If you want a 7.7-inch screen, you can get it. Uh, if you want to, this is a 5.3-inch screen. It's a Super AMOLED from Samsung, so it's a beautiful screen, really beautiful, brilliant color. They've got these screens now. They're they're uh, they're like the like your big screen TV. They have a setting in the in the screen setting so that you can have a dynamic standard or movie mode like your big screen TV. Uh, dynamic is like super bright, and I leave it on dynamic because I just like people to go, "Wow, what's that?" Uh, but movie mode is more natural. Isn't that funny? That's just like a big screen TV now. Uh, very fast dual. Now this is this is I think all phones, including the uh, the iPhones dual core, of course the iPhone 4s, and I think the five will also be dual, if not quad core. 
Uh, so big, big, fast processors in here. Can you imagine? I mean, this is a phone with dual 1.4 gigahertz processors. I mean, it's it's gigabyte of RAM. It's just it's just mind boggling what they're putting into these. These are computers. And I have to say, I've always had a difficulty, and I've got big, fat fingers, typing on those little on-screen keyboards on the iPhone. This one's big enough that I can use my fat fingers, and it works. I just, I just am very happy with it. Battery life is good, too, because, of course, when you... Now, it's a trade-off, and we're going to see this with the new iPad. I'm going to talk about that in a second. You get a, a bigger screen with more dots. It takes more battery, more juice uh, to keep it going. But, of course, you've got more real estate inside the phone to put the battery in. And so it's pretty often a push. This one, I'm getting pretty pretty solid 10 hours. But 10 hours, I think a phone should really be 16 hours. It should get me from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to bed without charging, right? That's really what you want. And it's not quite that. But unlike the iPhone, I, I can open up and put a new battery in. So I always, when I buy an Android phone these days... Can't do it with the uh, droids, but uh, with most Android phones, you can put in a different battery. So I just buy three batteries, and then I keep them all charged up. I have a separate charger, and any times I want, I just you know I've got it. Um, Ten hours is pretty good. You can get more, you can less depending on, of course, what you're doing. Watching movies on this thing is fantastic. Um, most of the tests show that you can watch movies for seven or eight hours straight. So be great on a uh, on an airplane. Uh, you put that on your seat back table and you could watch a movie. I, I understand for a lot of people, they feel like, gosh, this is just dangerous to have this giant phone. I might drop it. If you have small hands, that certainly would be a negative. Uh, on the other hand, um, uh, if you have big hands or you just have bad eyes or you just want a big screen, this is uh, this is pretty amazing. Right now, AT&T only. And as I mentioned, $300 with a two-year contract, although rumors are strong that Verizon is uh, is going to start selling this as the Galaxy Journal, nice name. And uh, when they do, I think this on a Ver on the Verizon platform with, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm I'm watching a movie. I should I should probably turn that down right now. This is that that new show that Netflix is doing called Lillehammer. Just did, did you see that the uh, Netflix is starting to produce programming. And this is with C.V. Van Zandt, who was, uh, you remember him from The Sopranos. And he plays a, you know, a mobbed up guy who is a, in the witness protection program and goes to Norway. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of Jersey Shore meets, Lil meets Lillehammer, Norway. It's kind of fun. Anyway, it looks great on this big screen. It's certainly watchable for an airplane or in the car. I, I like it. I have to say, uh, anyway, so to answer your question, our, our caller's question, no, it's not an iPhone, and so you won't live in the ga Apple Galaxy, uh, if you'll pardon the expression. Um, but, you know, there are other advantages. For instance, uh, one of the things I love about Android is is there's some different, there's a, there are plenty of apps. People often say, oh, the Apple's got all the apps. Yeah, half a million apps. In fact, they're about to sell their 25th, 25 billionth download. So yeah, there's absolute success, but but don't knock Android out. There are what are they? Three hundred fifty thousand apps. There's there's certainly plenty of apps. How many do you have on your phone? And there's some apps that Apple doesn't have. Uh, here's an app I love. It's called Locale. It's a free app for uh, Android, and it allows you to, for instance, have your to-do list. I use the Astra to-do list notify you when you get to the store when you have stuff on your store list, or notify you when you get to work. Or when you get home, it knows where you are. I've set up locale also, so when I place the phone down, because I'm often uh, recording, it turns off the ringer, turns off all the beeping and booping, puts the phone to sleep. When it's face down, the phone's asleep. When I turn it back face up, it wakes up and the ringer starts again. That's Things like that. See, wouldn't it be nice if the iPhone could do that? It can't. And the reason is mostly because Apple will not let developers have that kind of granular access to the hardware. Apple says no, no. If we're if that if we're going to write it, if they, <laughs> not you, we will do it. And if they don't, then you don't. Um, let's talk about the iPad three as long as we're talking about new hardware because rumors. The can you hear the drum beat? March seventh. Everybody seems to agree now. That's going to be the day. No invitations have gone out, but if they do, they will go out in ten days exactly. You know why I say 10 days? That'll be the 29th of February. February 29th is when Microsoft releases the consumer preview of Windows 8. And I'm willing to bet <laughs> 
that Apple, about two hours before that event, will send invitations out to the press. This is cutthroat, folks. <laughs> we, these guys are in it for blood. And they'll send those invitations out, and all the press will write about, the iPad event is coming up March 7th, and completely kill all the press for Windows 8. <laughs> I just watch. My prediction. I can tell the future. March 7th, we will see a new iPad, the iPad 3. We don't, you know, it's only rumors, but I think the rumors are credible and strong that it will be a retina display. What does that mean? Well, it means a lot. Right now, the iPad is 1,024 dots by 768 lines. That's, you know, a VGA display. It's not super high resolution. If you have that on your computer, you're kind of, huh. 1024 by 768. The next generation iPad will probably be double that, 2048 by 1536. And from those who have seen it, it looks stunning. And I, and I have no doubt that that will. It'll look like it'll look rock solid like you're looking at through a window. It'll be uh, incredible. They'll have to make it thicker, more battery life for that. And I believe LTE, although my sources tell me, that that has not been decided yet. Apple is still testing 3G and 4G iPad 3s, waiting to figure out which is more reliable, which is better battery life, and so forth. Again, my sources say they're getting good results with the 4G, so I predict we'll see a 4G that is LTE-based on Verizon and AT&T iPad 3. Probably, although again, unknown and different sources have different beliefs, probably with quad-core processor. I think you'll need that because you're pushing four times as many pixels. You've gone from, you know, a 1024 by 768 to 2048 by 1536. That's a lot of data on the screen. You need a lot of horsepower to do that. They'll either go quad-core or really beef up the graphics processor. In any event, this will be a very fast iPad. Should be interesting. That's, uh, I expect, uh, at least the announcement March 7th. Um, the question is how soon after March 7th Apple will ship. And I would guess within 10 days. So a month from now, you'll be able to get an iPad 3. That's my prediction. Julie in Minden, Nevada. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Julie. Oh, hold on. They're making me, making me go. I hear the magic music. Julie, you're next. Hang on. Don't go anywhere. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. More of your calls right after this. La, 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 la. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Trying to figure out. See, Kyle Benham, our music director, is very, he's a sly cove. He will play a song somehow applies to what we've been talking about. I'm trying to figure out what this one does. You're the one for me. Is this about the iPad 3, Kyle? <laughs> I guess. He says, yeah, whatever. Leo Laporte. <laughs> Maybe I'm giving him more credit. You do. Uh, Kyle does make the playlist available at the end of every show. You can find that on our website, techguylabs.com. Techguylabs.com. Uh, I know, you know, you go, go ahead, go, go, go look and laugh. Go mock me. Uh, the website looks like it was designed in 1998, and it was. To be honest, it was. It hasn't changed since then. Uh, it, is, uh, it is a relic. It belongs in a museum. But it is functional. The content is there, and every show has its own page. James DeRuvo writes down everything I say. Well, not everything, but in, the, the important stuff and puts links in and pictures and so forth. So... You know, it's functional, but I admit it doesn't exactly look like a major market radio show at all. <laughs> we are fixing that. I'm happy to say the uh, the new Tech Guy site has, the, the process has begun to redesign it. Good folks at Lullabot, one of the best uh, Drupal coding groups in the world, is working on it. They did the Grammys site. They did Martha Stewart's site all right okay so there are going to be pictures of me cooking pies on there and in, and in ball gowns it'll be beautiful one of the things i really wanted to add but if you go there now you'll find everything uh you know from the shows and so forth and the phone number there's a great link on the left there chat do use that because you'll go right to our chat room and there's about a thousand people in there right now and it's always fun 
It's always fun. Uh, it also gives you a link where you can watch uh, me do Make a Fool of Myself live on uh, Spy Cam, things like that. Yeah, it's all free. Links to all our sponsors, too. It's uh, techguylabs.com. And yes, yeah, soon, the soon to be improved. Not that soon. Well, well you know, it takes a little while. Uh, we've begun the process, Lullabot's coding even as we speak, but they, I think it's three months before the new site launches. One of the things we're going to have on there, though, that's great, and I want you to start thinking in, along these lines, is the Team Tech Guy, where we will give people a chance to uh, participate in answers as well as listen to the questions and yell at the radio. So if you are one of those people, and I know there's quite a few, most of the chat room, who likes to yell at the radio when I give an answer... Uh, you will now be able to go to the the actual question and answer. You'll see the transcript of the question, the transcript of the answer, video of the uh, question and answer, and then in a section below that, a chance to say, Leo is full of it. Here's the right answer. So we'll have a commenting section. And what's going to be nice about that is you can go there and not just give answers or you know, ask for clarification. You could also vote answers up and down, and I hope you'll do that as well. That's very important because I want the top answers, the best answers, to float to the top, right? They call it a karma system. And then uh, we'll, we'll incent people to do that by giving them prizes each month. The, uh, the answer or answerers that have the highest karma points will get, you know, they'll win a, uh, you know, hand-me-down gadget from my closet or something. <laughs> you, know what, this, you know what I would do this month? I would give you a Galaxy Note. How about that? Yeah, see? All right, now we're talking. Now, a prize worth hundreds of dollars every month. So get ready. If you want to join the Team Tech Guy, we're going to set that up in the next couple of months. Meanwhile, poor Julie, Minden, Nevada. She's been sitting there waiting patiently. Hi, Julie. Thanks for your patience. Well worth the wait, Leo. Thank How are you. you? I am great. Good. I'm delighted to speak to you. I am calling on behalf of my father who has a dilemma, and I said if anybody can help us, it's going to be Leo. Are you ready? I'm ready. He recently found out that his local radio station has dropped his coast-to-coast -coast programming that he loves to What? To. What? Why I oughta? Yeah, that's what we said, George too. George Norrie's just mad as heck. And um, it's caused him great stress because he looks forward to that every evening. But I don't anyway, blame him. Yeah, it's a great show. So, um, I, I was hoping that you could give us Something that he could use to lay in his bed at night and listen to it through headphones so that he doesn't wake up mother. She doesn't, she wants to listen she's to not, her own. She's not interested in extraterrestrials and crop circles. I think it scares her. <laughs> um, Leo, I, Dad does have a Wi Fi connection in his home. He's oh, very good. Hip. Oh, good. And, um, but it's, he doesn't have a laptop, so he can't really listen to it while he's in bed like he was using a, a radio and just getting it through that way so is there anything that you can suggest that he could get yes there's a number of things he can get okay great so you said he has an ipad no no <clears throat> i'm the one that has an ipad ah. and i showed him iheart radio he doesn't really want to invest that kind of money into the ah i see so so does he have any computing devices at all at this point? He has a office with a PC, and he has a Wi-Fi in there. Got it. But it's toward down the hall. Yes, correct. Yeah. You know, there are uh, Internet radios that might be a good solution for him. Now, I'm going to have to, maybe, Kyle, maybe you know this. I know that Coast to Coast, like many... By the way, same syndicator, Premier Radio Networks, that does this show, and it's a great company, uh, and I and I love them, and I love George, and I love the Coast to Coast. In fact, I appear frequently on it. Tom Danheiser, their producer, calls me a lot. Um, but I do know that on their website, you have to pay to be a member, and then you can get the podcasts, you can listen live, and so forth. But I, I so maybe you know this. Is it on the iHeartRadio app, Sybil? Sybil says it is. Yes, actually, it is. I okay. know for sure, Leo, because I have it on my iPad. I have our iHeartRadio. Oh, that's the, that. So that was my question: is because he does make people pay. I wanted to make sure that they still offered it for free on iHeartRadio. Yes. So that's the case. So good. All right. So now that means all your uh, dad needs is some form of internet radio. Right. Um, does he not want to buy an internet radio? Well, he said he that 
that that's not a problem. He didn't want to pay as much as I paid for the iPad. Oh, no, no, no. Here's the one. I just bought this one, and I, it just came out. It's 150 bucks. Is that okay? Oh, my God. That's going to thrill him. And my sister's in the other room taking notes. So tell us all he about it. Is gonna, I think he's going to really like this. This really looks like a, a, de a clock radio that you'd put on. In fact, it, it acts exactly like a clock radio that you'd put on your side table. Mm -hmm. um, it has, um, uh, you know, an alarm on it and so forth. I have to check to see if it has headphones because we want to... I was going to say, does he have, can he hook up earbuds to it or something? It looks like he can. Yes, there it is. Isn't that a headphone jack on the back there? It looks like it is. Um, and he'll also like he'll also use this as a regular clock radio, but here's mm -hmm. the beauty of it: it's it's an internet radio, so it's got a nice big. This is one of the breakthroughs. This is from a company called Grace. They've been making internet radios for a long time. I've had some of their others. I just ordered this one. I'm very excited about it. Um, it has a big three and a half inch color LCD on it. So for somebody in his 80s, I think this will make it much easier to find stations. It supports iHeartRadio, so you will be able to listen to Coast to Coast on it. Fantastic. But you'll also be able to listen to 18,000 other radio stations on it. I think that'll, that'll satisfy his needs. <laughs> I mean, this thing is, this thing is uh, I think, fantastic. So, and because it's a clock radio, I think he'll feel fairly comfortable with it. It's got good controls. It's easy to, fairly easy to use. Take a look at it on Amazon. Amazon's selling it for $153. Okay. I and just you know ordered it so I can review it for everybody. Mm-hmm. But he does have Wi-Fi, so I think because he has Wi-Fi, um, this will be the easiest thing for him to do. Is just going to put it next to the bed, and it'll be like clock radio, and he'll he'll be very comfortable with it. Except instead of getting it through broadcast, he'll get it on the internet. It's the Grace Digital Wi-Fi Music Player with three and a half inch color display. But if you just search for Grace Digital Radio, you'll see it. Um, the full uh, uh, model number is the GDI. IRC 6000. That's fantastic. And you know what, Leo? I think that's something I would even like to buy for myself because I live in an area where sometimes the, the reception is not very good and you have such perfect reception when you listen to internet radio. I agree. It's, oh, in fact, sometimes the quality is even better. This one has a nice speaker system and has a woofer and a tweeter. C, mm -hmm. C Crane is another company. I should mention them because they make, and somebody in the chat room is reminding me that they make very good internet radios. Um, they're, now, I have to say, the internet radio I have from them does not have controls as easy to use as this new, uh, this new one that I was mentioning. Mm -hmm. But I would look at them. They're a little less expensive. I think $140. Okay, well, i got to tell you, thank you so much. This was fantastic. You're welcome, Julie. Thanks so much for listening. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Well, hey, hey, hey. How are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. It's time to talk computers, the internet, cell phones, camcorders, MP3 players, all sorts of stuff. We're going to talk digital photography in a little bit. Chris Marquardt, our photo guy, joins us at 33 past the hour to talk black and white. Lots coming up over the next couple of hours on the Tech Guy Show, including, I hope, your call. 8888-ASK-LEO is the phone number. 8888 ask Leo. The uh, we were talking about internet radios. There are a lot of good ones out there right now, and I just ordered this uh, uh, Grace internet radio that just came out. They call it the Mondo. I mentioned the GDI RC six thousand number, but actually uh, it's the Mondo. <laughs> I think I think Mondo is a play on words. It is both ginormous or powerful. And it reaches the world. That's what's neat about internet radio. You can listen to everything. They do make, though, for a, a, a price, a nostalgic version that your your dad might like if he's in his 80s. It's a little more expensive, two twenty nine, and it's got a wood cabinet. <laughs> it looks like. <laughs> and it says, the Victoria, internet radio with old world charm. I think that's pretty funny. It's not as, uh, I think it's not as fancy as the Mondo. The Mondo looks to be the radio that they're making, it's their newest radio that has the most sophisticated interface. It really has, it has icons. It's its almost like you've got a built-in, you know, iPod touch in there with icons, which I think is going to make it easier. And most radio stations now do offer their uh, stream via the Internet, which is fun. It means there's 18,000 stations you can listen to all over the world, many of them in very high quality over uh, over your Internet connection. So I think that's kind of fun. 
And yes, iHeartRadio is on there, which means we're on there also. Jonathan in San Jacinto, California. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Jonathan. Hi, Leo. Good to talk to you. Nice to talk to you. I am a Mac fanboy. We are fully connected throughout the whole house. We got everything. We got Apple TVs. We got iPads. We got iPhones. <laughs> Me too, by the way. Me too. I don't, you know, as I'm hard on Apple, but I am an, I'm an Apple user. I love them. Oh, I know. Well, you know, and I recently dipped my toes in the water and bought a Kindle Fire, which uh, I kind of like. But I'm calling you today. I love. About, I think for 200 bucks, that's an impressive device. I actually got it for 100 Well, I got it for $200, but I got a $50 Walmart wow. gift card. Wow. Also, it deferred the cost. That, 150 bucks for a tablet like this, that's amazing. Yeah, it was a special. It ended on Valentine's Day. I got there at like 3 in the morning uh, on Valentine's Day. One thing we've learned about tablets is that people, if they get the price down to 100, 100 bucks, 150 bucks, 200 bucks, people will buy tablets. Uh, Completely that, agree. Yeah, even, kind of, even if it's not the best tablet. Everybody agrees the iPad's the best tablet, but boy, you can't beat that price, can you? Oh, I know. No, well, I, listen, I, I, I have two Apple TVs, but I bought a Roku box because you've been talking about them for so long. I thought, I've got to try the Roku, and it's a Roku XS. I guess that's the top of the line. Yes, you but, were excessive. <laughs> I was, but now I'm missing my iTunes library. Can uh, I? Apple's got you, don't they? Apple's got oh, you. Yeah. yeah, and this is why I have a Roku and an Apple TV. Oh. Uh, so the Apple TV actually doesn't do as much as the Roku does. The Apple TV no, does really, really three things. It does iTunes, Netflix, and uh, does it do Amazon? It doesn't even do Amazon, does it? No, it doesn't do Amazon. It does two things. It does <laughs> iTunes and Netflix. Um, <laughs> but that's fine. For a lot of people, that's more than enough. And it does it very elegantly, very nicely. So y your question is, how can I get the Roku to see your iTunes collection on your computer? Yes. I don't I don't know if there's a way. A chat room, do you know of a way to do that? They're very ingenious in the chat room. Maybe they're You know, one of the things to check out, Roku has this channel store where they have all kinds of channels including Twit, by the way, our, my my podcast network. Um, I know it. And and so sometimes Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm just um uh, they're telling me that you could you could hack the Apple TV, but that's not exactly what you're asking. Um, I've actually tried that, and I wasn't all that satisfied. Yeah, the fire core. Yeah, you know, leave the Apple TV as it is. I think, by the way, strong rumors about that as well. Uh, if you go to the store, there are there's no new stock for Apple TVs. They've got what they've oh. got, and there's no they are not able to order more, which usually means Apple's about to release an update. So oh, watch oh March seventh. I think is going to be not just an iPad day. I think there's going to be some some big changes. So there is an app called Play On that you mm -hmm. can get in the channel store, that will see an iTunes server on the Wi-Fi. So should be able to play the content unless it's copy protected. No, that's fine. So look for Play On. Uh, there is a Plex client, I believe, as well. So you might okay. be able to do that. Um, I'm seeing a number of different uh, solutions. It sounds like there are ways to do it. Play On is not free, by the way. No. Oh, well, how Plex, much is it? I don't know. Plex is free. I'm familiar with Plex. Yeah, Plex is free. Uh, I'm just looking at the chat room because I haven't done this because I have an Apple TV, so I just use that if I really want my Apple content. You know, <laughs> well, you know what, my I'm... Sonos also sees the Apple content, so I, I kind of i am satisfied. I don't need to really put it on the TV. Um, right. As long as it's not copy protected, you should be able to go to roku-channels.com. Nope, mm -hmm. is that wrong? That's wrong. Uh, you should be able to go to uh, the Roku channel store on your Roku, browse around, and I bet you can find something that will. What you see, what happens is that iTunes shows up as a server, a media server. It's a, a form of iTunes server. So all you need is some software that will see that server and play the content. Um, apparently, Cap'n says in my chat room that to play on is ten dollars a month or eighty dollars for a lifetime subscription. Mm, that's expensive. Yeah, yeah, why do that? www.roku-channels.com is, uh, I think, a third-party list of all the possible channels on the Roku, including some private channels that you you have to have an invitation to get to and stuff. It's kind of an interesting database. 
www.roku-channels.com. We'll put that link in the show notes at Tech Guy Labs. Okay. That gives you this is this is actually a fascinating list because you know there's weird stuff that you you may not see on the Roku, uh, mm-hmm. you may not see in the channel store if you know how to get to it. Things like Auss- Aussie Rules Football, uh, which I love, uh, <laughs> are is available there. So a uh, very large database of uh, of stuff, some of which invite only, some of which some of it's hidden. Um, there's a Charlie Rose channel. This is interesting. There's quite a bit, quite a bit of stuff on uh, the Roku box. I think the Roku is very a very int- really what it is. If you if you want to contextualize it, is it's basically designed to connect your television to the internet. Now most new TVs I've got in front of me the Samsung 8000 uh, TV. They this has Wi-Fi and Ethernet built into it. So most new TVs you don't need anything. But if you have an older TV. What the Roku does is it, it connects to the internet and then connects to your TV, and it gives you a way to access a lot of internet content. The good news, especially for people like me who broadcast on the internet, is I think all TVs in the future will have that built in. They just they'll go, they'll be able to see the internet the same way they see your cable or your satellite. It's just one more way to get content on there, and we won't need these add-on boxes. That's why there's so many rumors about Apple getting in the TV business. We, you know, we fully expect them to do the same thing. David, New York, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, David. Hey, Leo. How are you doing? Mm. I'm great. Thank you. So I think I need a new router because I'm on my, I guess, second one since I first set up on network like as like eight years ago. And it's starting to more often show some of the symptoms that the last one had before it died, needing to be power cycled and reset a lot. Yeah. Like the that the uh, Wi-Fi will just constantly stop working, and then I'll reset it, and it'll work fine. And yeah, these, I, you know, these devices are so cheap, and and they're really computers. But at forty or fifty bucks, they're not very robust, are they? Yeah. So what I was kind of yeah, going to ask you then is kind of, I guess, in the at least maybe more a hundred dollars or less range. All right, I'll, I'll give you some recommendations. I'm also going to tell you about Buffer Bloat. That's coming up. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. <laughs> Too much buffering. <laughs> Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888 Ask Leo. David's on the line from New York. He's asking a question that turns out to be very hard to answer. He needs a new router. You know, that's the device you connect to your cable or uh, DSL modem that lets you use more than one computer on the uh, connection. Or, even if you only have one computer, it gives you kind of a nice firewall between you and the outside world. I recommend routers. But, what router do you use? Now, there are plenty of choices under 100 bucks. I, in general, I like D-Link a lot, and those are the ones I use, David. Um, however, I just became aware of this issue called buffer bloat. Uh, the, I, I found out it from, about it from Bram Cohen, who is brilliant. I mean, I, and I, I, I don't use that word freely. Brilliant programmer who created BitTorrent. And uh, is just we interviewed him last week uh, on our triangulation show, and he talked about this issue. And I went back and I did some research. There's a good article uh, I'll put in the show notes from the Association for Computing Machinery (ACM). A, a discussion between Vint Cerf, the man who invented the internet, the TCP/IP protocol, and Jim Geddes, another pioneer in the internet, about this problem of buffer bloat. It turns out router manufacturers are making a boneheaded mistake. You can Wiki, Wikipedia has a good article about it this as well. Because m- memory has gotten so cheap, they're increasing kind of to huge sizes the buffering buffering is a, a little uh, area of memory on the router uh, that in theory, uh, protects you against dropped packets. You've seen buffering when you're watching a video stream on the internet, YouTube or whatever. Sometimes it'll say buffering as it catches up again and starts playing. And they're 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 really working on what is essentially a false premise that more is better in buffering. It isn't. In fact, they're breaking a fundamental technology on the internet that Vint Cerf created called TCP congestion avoidance. It's breaking it. And what's happening is... It's giving you very poor performance on your router. V- things like Skype 
get very latent, will never play back. You get a lot of additional buffering on watching video streams. It's actually a huge problem, and I wasn't even aware of this. Unfortunately, we don't know because the router manufacturers do not publish. We do not know uh, how much RAM each router has on it. So it's all just kind of being shared at this point by uh, people, you know, just kind of anecdotally. And, and I'm not sure what to recommend. Um, I do believe that D-Links are better in that regard. Um, yeah, and um, as I was on hold during the break, someone in the chat room mentioned a specific D-Link model. And as I'm looking at it, it did win the New, New Way Customer Choice Award. Yeah, so I, I, I like D-Link a lot. I, and that's all I buy. But now I have to investigate this whole buffer bloat issue and see if we can figure out somehow which routers are better. Because you will notice, for instance... How many people have suddenly, you know, it just, web pages take two or three seconds to load. You know, there's just like this hesitation. Buffer bloat. Believe it or not, that's buffer bloat. And uh, so there really is an interesting question. We're going to have to do more investigation on this. Um, I, I, have to, I have to figure it out. But uh, I'm, I, it's my opinion that uh, D-Link is, is good, good quality stuff. All right. One very strange thing I just want to throw at you before you let me go about this, though, is that I've noticed that when the Wi-Fi stops working, every device, you know, my PS3, my Kindle, my laptop, all the Wi-Fi stops working on everything except my iPad. Well, that's another matter. The iPad is notorious <laughs> for dropping Wi-Fi. No, it, no, the iPad... It doesn't. The oh. When the router right. goes out for everything else. Well, wait a minute. You mean the router's out, but your iPad continues to stay on the Internet? Yeah. Literally. I would check to see if it's on your router. <laughs> or maybe it's using its 3G connection. No, it's in a Wi-Fi-only iPad. That's bizarre. I know. Are you sure it's using your Wi-Fi? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I'm sure. So everything else has died. except. Well, you know, I wonder maybe if the iPad's doing something. Uh, I mean, it was happening to some degree before I got the iPad. It's just, That's you know, bizarre. not as often. Yeah, I, I, it is It is not unusual uh, for uh, iPad to drop Wi-Fi. Apple did push out a fix to that, and I haven't heard that problem since then. And I'm wondering maybe if they if uh, there's something going on with the, wi with the Wi-Fi on the iPad, it's more aggressive or, or something. I don't know. They maybe at least uh, upgrade the firmware or something on my router just before I buy a new one at least then? Uh, yeah, I would give, yes, I would absolutely give your router one more chance. Why spend money? Right. That you don't need to spend uh, certainly always upgrade the if you're having trouble with a router w upgrade the Wi-Fi on the router absolutely okay but if I do need to get something new you say D-Link would be the most reliable. I like D-Link I like Netgear as well I uh, I have stopped buying Linksys that's the Cisco brand that is kind of the number one router brand in the world um, mostly because they make so many of them I think their quality control went downhill for a long time they were the router to buy but I I, I would say Netgear or uh, or D-Link would be my first two choices. All right. So have they sort of become like printers? And yes. Kind of they're commodities. The yeah. And you need to go with like the mid-price. Yeah, they're com they've, they've become commoditized. Yeah. And uh, so it is probably worth, you know, this is one of the reasons some people buy Apple. Apple routers, although they're twice as much or more, sometimes three times as much, uh, people seem to have fewer problems with them. I'm not sure why, because it is the same chipset. They're all using roughly the There's only two companies that make uh, Wi-Fi chipsets. Um, but I, maybe the firmware is better. Or maybe they're not putting in big buffers. I don't know. I don't know. Um, the way to update the firmware on your router, you, you log into your router through your browser. You know, you look in your manual, usually it's on a Linksys, it's 192.168.1.1, but it'll be different, it Might sometimes it's 0 0.1. But you log into your router, and then usually it's in the advanced section, it says upgrade firmware. And what you'll need to do is download the firmware from the manufacturer site, get the right one for your uh, router, and then fix it. The other thing you might want to look at doing, if you have a router, not all of them are compatible, but if you have a router that's compatible with something called DDWRT or Tomato. These are This is third-party open-source router firmware that's very good. If, you, if, if you're having trouble with a router and your router is compatible with Tomato or DDWRT, it will be absolutely worth putting that on there. You may find it fixes all your problems. 
it's because it's open source and it's actively developed, it's often better than the manufacturer's own firmware. Hey, look who's here. Chris Marquard is here, our photo guy. Chris is uh, the host of a great podcast called Tips from the Top Floor, tfttf.com, or go to chrismarquardt.com. You can find all his stuff, or on our website, techguylabs.com. He uh, joins us every week to talk about photography, to encourage us to take more pictures. In fact, we still have a uh, an assignment going, don't we, Chris? Oh, I turned you down. Red flicker. Look, turn you okay. Now I, speak. <laughs> am I here? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I turned you down. I'm sorry. We we still have an assignment going at Flickr, and it's um, at our Flickr group at the Tech Guy group. Um, you find that on Flickr, just um, search for Tech Guy, and join the group, and then you can participate. And the current assignment is up till the end of the month, and it's music. 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 So all you, the idea is, you've got to go. Take your camera. It can be a camera, phone, any kind of, no fancy. You don't need a fancy camera. But take it out in the world and look around. Use your eyes and look for something that would illustrate the concept or thought or idea music. It's pretty wide open. Then tag that picture and uh, upload it to Flickr, which is free, F-L-I-C-K-R dot com. If you don't already have an account, uh, it's easy to set one up. Join the Tech Guy group and make sure you tag it with the word music and you put it in the Tech Guy group, our Group admin Orbit Gal will welcome you, and uh, she's got all the rules on the front page right there of uh, Flickr at, uh, in the Tech Guy group. You'll know you're in the right group when you see my face and uh, 9,000 members. <laughs> That's huge. awesome. That's great. <laughs> That's awesome. I love I it. I love that. Uh, yeah, and you, you seriously don't need a fancy camera. Actually, most of the photography is not in the camera. It's in you, the photographer. Yeah. Um, and, to, and to prove that... What I did this afternoon, it was freezing cold here, and it was starting to rain, but I went out to, uh, for the afternoon and shot just with the iPhone. Good. A lot, a lot and, of people are doing that these days, using the uh, oh, yeah. they call it iPhoneography. Uh, they're using yeah. their iPhone to take pictures. Our friend uh, Lisa Bettany is, is uh, going around the world in 48 days and doing, and she didn't bring her big Canon 5D Mark II. She just brought her iPhone, and yeah. it's kind of cool. And, and not, not just did I use the iPhone, I kind of... Dumbed it down. Um, so I, I used an app to shoot and didn't use the built-in camera, but I used a little app called No Finder. That's to a totally simple app. Uh, you can set a few presets, like a few fancy picture styles and stuff. Uh, I chose the black and white style. Um, and I went out and I just shot with that on black and white. You don't have a finder. It's not, it doesn't have a viewfinder. You just point the camera in the direction. So you, you basically have to learn how to frame the shot in your mind. And... Black and white, there's so much power in black and white, um, and that's what I wanted to talk about. Black and white has, uh, there are things in the frame that are important, there are things in the frame that are not important. There's kind of a hierarchy, you know, some things are more important than others. Um, if you look at lines, at the shapes, at contrast, at bright and dark, bright things, for example, are more important than dark things in a frame. So um, your eye will, or the eye of the viewer will be drawn towards brighter things almost automatically. So there is a hierarchy, darker areas are not as important. Uh, very contrasty areas are really important. Um, low contrast is not that important. So if there's those two in the frame, you will always likely go more towards the contrasty side. Um, so there was this whole hierarchy of of things, of lines and shapes and bright and dark contrasts in black and white. And as soon as you shoot black and white, that's all you've got. That is your picture. You don't have the color. And as soon as you add color, color has its own hierarchy of importance. Warmer colors are stronger than, than cooler colors. So um, if you go by the rainbow, Roy G. Biff, red, orange, yellow, those are the warm colors. Those are the, the, the colors that draw attention. And if you have green, blue, um, violet in there, they are not as strong. So as soon as you mix colors in black and white, that's when it starts to get a bit more difficult because all of a sudden you have those different things that call for attention. And if you go black and white only, and that's what I use this little no finder app for, I think it's a 99 cent app, um, that will allow you to just cut that out. You don't even have to compose. You just point in the direction, you make a picture in your mind, and then you take that picture. And um, I'm really happy with the pictures I, I got this way. I'm really, really happy to kind of go really low tech on, in a way. I don't, I'm not familiar with this. No finder. I'll have to look for that. Fine. Yeah. yeah, it's super simple. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't even look that fancy, um, but it really cuts out a lot of the fuzz, and it it 
kind of almost gives you the freedom to not have to really look at every detail in the frame. Um, and I, I shot the afternoon with it, and I'm I put some pictures up uh, on Flickr and. In a little photo set, uh, I'm really, really happy with what came out there. That's great. That's really cool. So black and white has tons of power. Black and white is really strong. Um, is there, and when, besides just shooting black and white, is there a time when you look at a picture that you should you, you look at it and you go, oh, that should be black and white? Absolutely, absolutely. Just just think of you have something pretty, really bright that is really important in the picture, and then you have something with the let's say a red a red dot on the other side of the picture that draws away all the attention from what's important in the picture, so all of a sudden that that warm color distracts you from what's really important, and as soon as that happens, these, these are the things that uh, that make me want to go black and white just to make sure that the importance in the frame, the subject in the frame, what is important in a picture, really stays important and is not distracted from. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that. Well, to find out more. Go to uh, Chris's website, chrismarquart.com, C-H-R-I-S-M-A-R-Q-U-A-R-D-T.com. And don't forget Pocket Chris, now in its second edition, Chris's little uh, iPhone app, as long as you're getting iPhone apps, uh, uh, Pocket Chris is available on the store. How much is Pocket Chris? That's a 99 cent app. And uh, it's kind of like having Chris in your pocket, I think, is the, is the, is the basic idea, right? Yeah, careful with the, with the change in there. Um, <laughs> yeah, don't throw keys <laughs> on top of Chris. It's a little teaching app, so it'll it'll get you through these concepts. It'll it'll help you understand what's important in a photo, what's not important, how to get there. There's some technical, some some stuff about image composition, some stuff about uh, just technique. So it really covers all the bases, and um, people actually buy it and and use it to show their friends why they love photography so much. Yeah. So. Um, I've heard people say that they now can actually explain to their friends how it works just by pulling out the app and um, showing them some of the details. And it's a very intuitive kind of thing to work with. So um, put Chris, lots of um, work in that. Chris's uh, Flickr account is N-U-B-U-I, and he has a, a set of black and white photos there. Um, That's the ones I shot this afternoon. Yeah, Ice, what is it? Ice Streif, Ice Züge. <laughs> It means, um, oh, I don't even know what it translates to. It I has no um, no English equivalent, <laughs> but it's all iPhone uh, black it's and like white an photography. Ice, an eye stroll. It's like an eye stroll. An eye stroll. You know, it's kind of interesting. Uh, this does not look like you did it with an iPhone. It's pretty, these are pretty good pictures. It's not about the phone. It's, it's yeah. not about the camera. It is really about what you put in the frame where, it's how you amazing. work with bright and dark with the contrasts. And you found that white fence, which gives you something to work with. The white sky gives you something to work with. It's really neat. Absolutely. Yeah. I strive for Zulga. Almost there. I'll, next, I'm next working time I'm on it. We, we, can, we can practice. Um, and uh, again, I'm going to find that app. Is it only iPhone? It's not on Android, huh? It's, I think, but there must be something like that on, on yeah. Android. I mean, it's, it's really as simple as it gets. It has a big button and... Take a picture. Is. i got to find it. Chris Marquardt joins us every week to talk photography at this time. Thank you, Chris. More of your calls coming up right after this. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. I'm free, but I'm focused. She's, she's, she's got one hand in her pocket, the other on her viewfinder free iPhone app. Leo Laporte, 8888 Ask Leo. That's the phone number. Charles is in Omaha, Nebraska with some bad news. I'm so sorry, Charles. Oh, thank you so much for taking my call, Leo. My pleasure. Yeah, I was I was actually home on Friday and I just left the house for 40 minute oh, window. Man. And I came back and I saw the glass was broken and I had my son go over and wait by the car. I opened the door, and I could just see the speakers were all moved oh. around. And knew everything was gone. Horrible I mean, they, feeling. MacBook Pro, my oh. wife's MacBook, our beautiful Samsung HDTV. Oh, my God. Yeah, airport, airport ex, uh, Extreme. They must have had a, a truck. They must have had a truck and just kind of ran in and threw everything in the truck. Well, the, the, some of the witnesses around the neighborhood said it was like a green car. Wow. Now, let me ask you, do you have insurance? I hope you have insurance on all that. Well, yeah, we're going through the process oh, right now. Man. Insurance and stuff. But, I mean, we figure, I mean, just counting on stuff that we can remember, we're probably like at about $8,000. Criminy. Yeah, somebody's yeah. saying somebody's saying in the chat room, I think it's true, they must have been, you know, kind of 
scouting you for a while. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it was only a 40-minute window. Yeah, they must have known exactly what was... Boy, that's terrible. So... And I was asking the police, and they were saying that, you know, chances are someone's been in your house or someone's been in your house that's seen... What they knew what was in there. Exactly. Yep. yep. They knew exactly what they were up to. Wow, that's terrible. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I'm so Horrible. sorry. But you, moving, you, you didn't put on Facebook, hey, I'm going to be leaving for 40 minutes, did you? No, I did not do that. <laughs> <laughs> we've heard stories. I think they're mostly apocryphal, but we've heard stories of people, you know, watching you on Facebook to see when you're leaving the house or Foursquare, one of those uh, networks. I don't think crooks are that sophisticated, really, but maybe, maybe. They could be. Who knows? I guess they I mean, could be. They took everything but... Horrible. The, the, Whatever reason they left the Mac Mini, so I'm kind of glad. Yeah, we don't want a Mac Mini. That's oh, I don't think there's. <laughs> they were snobby. Yeah, exactly. So going back and forth with different uh, home video surveillance and stuff. I'm on the website, and again, uh, I guess I'm just like every caller today that's been the cult of Mac because all our stuff is Mac. Right. And I want to set something up myself. With videos, and I want, if I'm away from the house, I want to be able to bring it up on my phone, my iPad, whatever, and then have some form of hard drive in a lockbox within the house that's just recording stuff constantly. Yeah, there are a lot of different ways uh, to do this. There's a new camera we saw at CES that I'm very intrigued by because it's wireless. And, you know, one of the issues of setting things up like this. Uh, of course, is all the wiring you have to put in the wall and stuff. It's view. It's viewzone. V u e z o n e dot com. I've actually ordered some to try them out, but I was pretty impressed with what I saw at CES. Works on an iPad. Um, they have motion detection cameras as well, so you can have cameras that aren't on unless uh, somebody's moving around. Uh, they offer uh, recordings, online recordings, so you can go back. You don't even need the lockbox. They record online. Uh, okay. So you can go back in time. Um, I'm pretty impressed by these. They support up to five cameras, I think, on a single system. Actually, up to 15 cameras on a single system. So you could put them outside, inside, all over the place. Oh, I have to look at yeah. that. Then. Yeah, I think this this uh, this is pretty uh, pretty new, state of the art stuff, and they're really cute little cameras. They don't they're not you know kind of too offensive looking. Uh, you're not going to look like you've got you know. Those big camcorders in the corners of your house. <laughs> uh, although you may want them, uh, uh, you may that may be a deterrent. Uh, and they're yeah. fa and they're fairly affordable. Uh, it's, so it's a wireless system. I believe it uses Wi-Fi, PC or Mac or smartphone or iPad. You can you know check in at any time and see what's going on in the house. Um, and I think this is exactly what you want. And because it's wireless, you don't have to worry about where you're putting those cameras. You don't have to dig into the walls. That kind of thing. Yeah, that's exactly what I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they have online storage, which I really like. It means you don't have to have that lockbox in the closet. Uh, your stuff is going up to a, a, a private site that only you have access to uh, oh, online. Yeah, isn't that better than the, the thieves can't get it? They can't steal it. Five bucks yeah. a month. Five bucks a month means you can view it on your computer, your smartphone, five cameras, 250 megabytes of storage, video email alerts. I was pretty impressed by all of this. So. Oh, wow. That's, that's awesome. That's yeah. Better than I, better option I thought I could do. Yeah, I think it's kind of state of the art. But again, yeah. I haven't used it. I just, we saw them at CES and I was pretty impressed. We played with the cameras a little bit. I thought that, I thought that was really neat. Sure, I'll definitely have to look into yeah, that. Yeah, of course, if they, and somebody's in chat room saying, yeah, and if they cut off your internet, you're not getting recording anymore. Well, that's true. That <laughs> is true. And that was one of our big things because we have all the router and the cable box and everything sitting by the TV. And once they start moving stuff around, of course, that got unplugged. Right. So I think at that point, I will put that in the back end. Yeah, lock that one up. Yeah. Yeah. And then run everything through that. That's pretty sophisticated, too. I mean, I, I, don't, I doubt very much. That's something you see in the movies. Somebody cuts the phone lines before they go in. I don't think, oh, that, yeah. I don't think that's really what's going to happen there. They stole your router, huh? Yeah. Like, apparently, they like the Apple stuff. But they, guess they, didn't. <laughs> but they didn't want a Mac Mini. Oh, no. Charles, I am, I, you have my, now, can I ask you, did you have backups of your data? No, the, the thing was, I always listen to you, I listen to you every single weekend. I have, I had two backup hard drives in the house, and I actually had an offsite that I went and picked up from work and was locked on my desk. Hallelujah. 
Yeah. So I got. I think I got looking back probably eighty five, ninety percent of the stuff. That so. I'm really pleased. Thank you. I'm glad you. I'm glad you had offsite backup. It's so important. Let me actually. Uh, there'd be a good time to do a carbonite ad, but I, I'm. You have my deepest sympathy, Charles. I'm so sorry. Uh, and uh, at least you know, no nobody was hurt. You know, it's just stuff. I'm, we're, we're ordering those view zone cameras, and I'll, I'll let you know what I think of them. We've been using a system called DropCam. It's similar. Unfortunately, I feel kind of bad. They, they, they started manufacturing their own cameras, and the quality went way down. And I'm, I'm, you know, we're, uh, we have drop cams here in the studio. Same idea. You put them up. They're wireless. They record to the Internet. But the, the quality just went way down. A little disappointing. David in Fullerton. Hi, David. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Oh, oh, you hear that? Means I got to take a break. David, hang on. You're next. I will tell you how you can unlock and why you might want to unlock your Samsung Galaxy S2. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Well, hey, how are you today? Leo Laporte here. The tech guy. 8888-ASK-LEO is the phone number we're talking about. Anything with a chip in it, uh, your home theater system. In fact, I've been reviewing this amazing uh, Samsung, the new, the newest Samsung with smart apps. It's right behind me. It's just gorgeous. We talk about uh, computers, of course, and the Internet. When I first started doing tech call-in shows back in 19... Back in the last century... Back in 19, oh, I guess it was 92, I did started doing full-time, 24-7 tech call-in shows. Um, it was computers, right? What were you talking about in 1992? It was DOS 5, Windows 3.1, and we certainly didn't talk much about the Internet in the earliest days. By 95, we were talking about the Internet for sure. And then cell phones really didn't take off. And we talked. I, I used a BlackBerry, talked about BlackBerry... You know, end of the 1990s, early 2000s, but it wasn't until 2007 when the iPhone came out that it really became the computer in your pocket. And really, I have to say, in many ways, all of the exciting stuff that's happening now in computing is happening in mobile, tablets, smartphones, that kind of thing. So we spent a lot of time talking about that as well. Let's talk about Samsung. David's on the line. He's got a Galaxy uh, S2. How do you like it, David? Uh, I like it. I got it. Uh, I rooted it, right? Yeah. So, so you have unlocked it. That's, you know, in in the uh, Apple world, they call it jailbreaking. In the uh, in the Google world or the Android world, they call it rooting. It's just kind of a little bit different because you know, in Android, you can buy apps anywhere. There's a checkbox in the security settings to say allow third party apps. It means you can get an app anywhere. It, you can't do that in an iPhone unless you jailbreak it that's why they call it jailbreaking it uh, yeah then you, you know but then you can buy stuff igag city and other and other uh, uh non-apple app stores because apple really doesn't want you to do that they want to make all that money themselves uh google you know android is open and so you can install apps from amazon and other, amazon has their app store too right uh i'd be careful about where you install apps in general you want to you know get apps from safe known sources but uh, amazon certainly is safe as google and apple so good. So you've rooted it. That uh, now all that means on an on a on an Android phone, you've already got the ability to buy a third party places. Rooting it means that you have uh, uh, super user permissions, and so there's some apps like Titanium Backup that require that if you want to modify the firmware on your system. In other words, yeah. not use the the stuff that Samsung provided. You can you have to root it first. Th those are the kinds of things you can you can get in a lot more trouble with a rooted phone. That's for sure. <laughs> Yeah, what I what, the reason I did it was so I could get the Wi-Fi tethering, so I didn't have to pay for a hotspot. Right. right. But um, my question is, is like I, because I travel out of the country quite a bit. Like I go to Mexico and South America, and um, I oh, have. You want to unlock it? I get it. Yeah, I want to be able to use it in another country. So who's uh, whose Galaxy S two do you have? You have Sprint or? Uh... It's T Mobile. T Mobile. Good. All right. Good. So the. Uh, it's a fifty dollar unlimited plan. Yeah. It's like a free thing. So I just need to like 
figure out how to unlock it. And, like, I don't want to pay somebody because, like, I've researched right. it online and they're like, uh, I'll unlock it for $2. And then I see, like, a lot of reviews. They're like, oh, it didn't work. It's bunk. It's a scam. So I'm like, I just need to get the code, the unlock code for my phone so I can, you know, take the SIM card out and then put the code in and then be able to use it in another country. Right. I buy, uh, almost always when I buy phones like this Galaxy Note, I buy the international unlocked version for that very reason. I want to be able to, I'm going to go to Norway next month. I want to be able to take the, the SIM out, the AT&T in this case, SIM out, and put in a Norwegian SIM so I have, you know, cheaper data and phone calls. Uh, if you travel a lot, that's a nice thing to do. Um, but if you buy a phone, a subsidized phone from a carrier, they're going to lock it to that carrier. So your T-Mobile phone has got the words T-Mobile right on the front, right? That they, yeah. That's their way of saying, it's ours, man. And uh, and they've locked it so that you can't take out the SIM card and put in another company's SIM card. It just won't work. Now, um, the laws have changed a little bit. And, and uh, fortunately, we're moving in this country towards what they already have in almost every other country of the world, which is a requirement that after you've kind of been a customer for a while... The company has to unlock the phone. All of these phones can be unlocked. Um, there is a hidden unlock code. Those guys who are selling it uh, sometimes um, are selling something legit and sometimes not. Uh, yeah. So that's the problem is how do you know who's good and who's not? There is, I'm looking right now, an app that claims to unlock the, the Galaxy S2. Yeah, is it the is it on the app market on yeah. the Android market? Yeah. Okay. It's uh, it's called Galaxy S two SIM unlock. Okay. Um, I think root access is required, right? I yes, think. you got to be a root, of course, and that will be true in general. It, but you, you you're kind of taking your chance when you do something like that because who knows? There, you know, it's not unheard of to have malware out there and so forth. So I'm a little nervous. About this, the good news is the Galaxy S2 has been out for a while. It's a very popular phone, and yeah. um, and so a lot of a uh, lot of open source folks are working hard on this. The other option you have, and I often recommend this, and this this is required for a CDMA phone, I think. But a GSM phone is a little easier. But on a CDMA phone, is the, you know those guys who sell cell phones but aren't a company store. Uh, they sell maybe three different companies' phones: T-Mobile, AT&T, and you know, Sprint or something like that. Often those guys, if you go in there, they will they can unlock it as well. And they might have some experience with unlockers. I it's always a good idea. I recommend this all the time. Have an independent cell phone store in your back pocket. If possible, get your phone from them in the first place. Because then they can help you in all sorts of ways. These guys they live and breathe smell smell phones cell phones <laughs> if you combine smartphone and cell phone you get smell phone there you go they live and breathe this stuff and they often um th what you need is somebody who's tried it and says oh yeah this one works this one doesn't the other place i and you've probably already been there because if you've un if you've rooted your phone and probably is the first place you went is the xda developers forum all right yeah, yeah and I, would, I would i would search them for unlocking uh, information on the Galaxy S2 because what you, what you're looking for is I've tried this and it worked or I've tried this and it didn't work. I wouldn't use anything that a number of people haven't tried and, and recommend. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I don't know off the top of my head. I don't know. Um, yeah, because I tried calling T-Mobile. Well, I, actually, I was going to because I read about that and they said like they'd be able to give you the unlocked code. But see, since my phone is rooted and I, I flashed the ROM, so I have a whole other operating system. <laughs> <that I can't laughs> well, I think the unlock code will work regardless. But, uh, you know, one thing you could do, did you put Clockwork Mod on there? Yeah, I have Clockwork Mod and then I have the uh, Amon Ra. Yeah, one thing you could do is you could, Clockwork Mod usually will, it, I hope you backed up the original ROMs to let you restore the original ROM easily right. with ROM yeah, Manager. I Go back, in other words, <laughs> pretend it's a normal phone. And yeah. uh, and then get them to to uh, unlock it, and then you could put Amon Ra back on. Okay. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I'm looking at the chat phone, chat room. Nobody in the chat room seems to know uh, what a good way to do this is. Um, it is certainly doable, and on the S2, I, I think it's particularly easy to do. Samsung uh, used to lock their bootloaders and stuff, and they've really kind of act. You know, everybody's moved back to the, you know. 
model of, yeah, let them do whatever they want. Certainly Google doesn't mind if you do whatever you want. Yeah. So uh, somebody in the chat room says, yes, it, you will need to restore the original ROM, unlock it, and then reflash your new ROM. Okay, okay. Okay. And, and this is one of the reasons, as I travel, I always keep around an unlocked phone of some kind because I want to be able, and it has to be GSM, of course, and it has to have all the world frequencies, but I always want to be able to, when I get to a, a country, I like to keep one phone that, this is, this is me, but I like to keep one phone that has my old number, my U.S. number, and then one phone with a local number, so you get both. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 88, 88, ask Leo. Uh, back to the phones, Bill in uh, Bushmill, Florida. Bill, you're next. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Bill. Hey, how you doing, Leo? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Me and my wife have actually been shopping today. We, um, we're couponers. We've been couponing for about four years. Um, so we do a lot of printing of coupons online. Do you use any of the coupon apps or the coupon? Because, I mean, nowadays, the smartphones, there's some great coupon apps. Yeah, when you do the coupon app, like when it shows you, like, the barcode for the cashier to ring it up, yeah. they don't really work. It's too much of a glare. Interesting. So it's not worth it. Yeah. It's not really worth that. Um, the, the the question I have is my wife, the laptop we had, we're, we were, we're done with. It's just too heavy. It's like 15 pounds. It's on our lap. Um, we would <laughs> Did you say cow. it's 15 pounds? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. I didn't know they it made them that big. <laughs> wow. So she wants to go to a tablet. And then while I'm afraid of with the tablet, and that's why I couldn't really answer our question was, will we be able to print our coupons off the tablet, off of Android? Because you have to download a, a special program. Yeah, to if, you, if you're going to get a tablet, don't get an Android tablet. Okay. Get an iPad. You 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 know you want to. Well, the problem is, is, is it comes down to money. So five. It's five hundred dollars compared to what is the Android tablet you're looking at? Five hundred dollars. Get an iPad. <laughs> Get an. By the way, the iPad prints just fine. Well, okay. The the print's not the problem. It's really going to be. Um, well, I didn't try it on an iPad. I tried it on an Android, and I tried to go to like Target.com. Target.com has their own their own couponing, and it wasn't supported. It wasn't. Let supported. me tell you. Let me tell you. Any site that doesn't support the iPad is suicidal. Right? <laughs> right? How many iPads are there out there? Fifty million? Eighty million? How many Android tablets are there out there? Seven. It doesn't. It just. You know, the reason you get an iPad is all of the above. It prints. Everybody supports it. If they don't, what they're n what are you nuts? Uh, and by the way, wait, don't get the iPad today because uh, there's a new iPad coming out in about two or three weeks, and I think it's going to be spectacular. You can get a Kindle Fire for two hundred bucks. You'll save three hundred dollars. You're a couponer. I'm sure that sounds sweet, but it won't do any of the stuff <laughs> that you want to do. So. Um, uh, yeah, I don't think Android tablets are ready for prime time. The only Android tablet I like at all is the Asus Transformer Prime, uh, and it's still not ready for prime time. You could, you know, you'd be if really you might look at a very light laptop. There's plenty of two and three pound laptops uh, that you would prefer that would print that would work with everything, Windows or Mac. But seriously, I, I, I think an iPad is exactly what you want. Get the cheapest iPad. You don't need 3G unless you want to print. Maybe you want to print coupons in the parking lot. I don't know. Um, it just, it just, and, and so they're pointing out in the chat room, you can get a pretty good deal on refurbed I, iPads. Don't get them from anybody but Apple, by the way. Do not get a refurb from anybody but the original manufacturer. But the Apple has plenty of iPads in their re, in their outlet. They call it, I think, the outlet store uh, that were returned, never used, but returned uh, and can't be sold as new. Um, I just it doesn't it doesn't make sense. Now, when the new iPad comes out uh, in March, I think March seventh. Well, this is the guess. No one knows. We believe that they'll announce March seventh. And ship shortly thereafter. I am pretty sure that one of app, one of the things Apple will do is continue to offer the iPad 2 at a reduced price. 
because they are, they are, there are lots of people like you who are saying, well, I don't know if I want to spend 500 bucks. Look, the Kindle's only 200 bucks. So I'm thinking that Apple will probably offer the iPad to somewhere around 300, 350 bucks. And uh, it, in an attempt to kind of stem the flow towards Android. So, uh, yeah, get, get, no one, no one outside Apple knows for sure, but Bill, I think this would be a false economy. If uh, I do think a, a tablet is a great idea. I think you're going to love the iPad, and I think I would wait until uh, the new one comes out because it's it's due out any minute now. Tim in Sierra Madre, California. Hey, Tim, thanks for hanging on. You're uh, Leo. This is uh, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Leo. Um, I'm having a horrendous problem with uh, the total lack of support from Magic Jack. I wonder if maybe you have some help. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, what did you pay for that Magic Jack? Well, I got a Magic Jack Plus, and because I was uh, an existing customer, they gave me a good deal, supposedly, for $39, which is about okay. half price. So you are you want some support for something you bought for $39. Now, I just, yeah. I just want to point out something. <laughs> when you make a support call, most, mm -hmm. uh, most estimates are it's $25 the minute the support person picks up the phone. You paid $39. That means now of the $39, I don't know how much margin they have. But let's say they have 50% margin. They're underwater immediately. When you pay $39 for a product, do not expect support. They can't support it at that price. Uh, you know, It's our fault. We have pushed the prices down on laptops, on desktops, on every kind of technology. We have put the screws to the manufacturers. They cannot compete without lowering their price. So how do they do it? Well, they go offshore to manufacture in China where they can pay somebody $4 a day to make it. That's one way. Did you see the, the uh, stat that on the iPhone, $8 of the cost of the iPhone is goes towards Chinese workers, towards manufacturer, $8. That's how much it costs. That's why they make it there. What else costs some money? Oh, when you call in and say it doesn't work. <laughs> that costs them a lot of money. So uh, that's why they're also offshoring support to, uh, you know, people in India and, and uh, all over the world. Not very good support. Often they don't even offer support. And I can see why. On a, on a product that costs $39, uh, even let's say they made $30 on it. Let's say it only cost them 9 bucks. Let's say it cost them a dollar. It's very two support calls and they're still underwater. They cannot afford to support it. So, you know, I feel for you, Tim. But when you buy something for thirty nine bucks, don't expect any support at all. Period. You cannot. I'm surprised that they. I'm surprised they. <laughs> They've unbundled support, you understand. Now, I don't even know if Magic Jack, and I bet they don't, offers a premium support. But it would cost, the reason they wouldn't probably is because it would cost probably 80 bucks on a, on a $39 product. Now, Citizen X says in the chat room, I disagree. If they make it, they should support it. Well, that is kind of, does make sense from a moral point of view. But um, it doesn't make any sense from an economic point of view. And I hate to tell you, but this is a business. They cannot support it. If they wanted to support it, they should charge three or four times more. They would be, and this is what it used to be. You know, it used to be a computer would cost twenty five hundred bucks. That's a, probably a thousand of that was support. They used to bundle the support in, and we demanded lower prices. So what did they do? They unbundled support, and uh, and then we complain. Oh, but the thing it doesn't have any support. No, of course not. You're not paying for it. David in Riverside, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hey, David. Hi. Oh, dang it. That magic <laughs> sound is making its noise. Can you hang on for one more minute? Oh, yeah. You'll be next right out of the box. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. That was a, I think this was a benefit for uh, Obama when he was in San Francisco, right? Chris Cornell of Soundgarden. Performing Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Uh, you could thank uh, musical director Kyle Benham for our uh, music today, and he puts his playlist online on our website, techguylabs.com, at the end of every show, so you can find all those songs. I think a lot of the stuff he finds is on YouTube, right? You, you just you just steal stuff from YouTube right and left. We share. <laughs> we share. It's called sharing. David is in Riverside. You're very patient, David. Thank you. 
Hi. What can I do for you? Well, I'm not computer savvy at all. I should be. It'd... Nope, nope, don't say that. I don't think that's a, a requirement. Well, my college major would make me in the electronics part of it. Oh, that would... <laughs> well, that's different. <laughs> You know, they do motherboards and all that hardware stuff, and then they go up into software, and that's where it ends for me. Right, right. You can know everything there is to know about electronics, but really it's the programming these days that makes the difference. Yeah. Um, I've been working on a project, and it's the one I'm calling about is a list of phone numbers, a list that I've created myself, and I have 8 million phone numbers in each of my individual files. Holy this cow! What are these numbers for? Uh, some research data that I'm doing. Okay. Uh, for publishing work, I'm a printer publisher. Okay. And um, anyway, my original file with this was six thousand correction four thousand six hundred and sixty-two pages long, seven columns, about four hundred phone numbers on a page, and they were forty-two point seven megabytes. But they had an error in them, and I didn't like it, so I corrected that error and uh, got it down to 4,655 pages, but they're very tight. And I like that because of the number of files, that's over 23,000 pages of AIR, AIR that I got out of there. Uh, when I did the files the second time, they started hopping around, not, not what's visible, but on the computer. What and program so are you using for the uh, database? When, uh, Microsoft Windows X, XP. Yeah, what program? Though? That's the operating system. Are you using uh, Office? Microsoft you're using Office. Office. Okay. So what happens? Uh, uh, this happens all the time in databases and so forth. Um, file sizes can can balloon very quickly um, because it's not doing what we call garbage collection. So if you want to, you know, the base data is exactly as you said. It's very small. But as you mess around with it, it's saving, uh, you know, changes. So there's undo. It's just it's just doing all sorts of stuff. In most database programs, for this reason, they have a kind of rebuild the index feature that will re kind of compress the data back to its original size. Um, I'm I'm not sure if you're using when you say Office, if you're using Access or you're using Excel as a spreadsheet or a word processor, but. In every case, you're going to have some file bloat as you use it. And you kind of want to go back to the original size. Probably the best thing to do is kind of export the data out into a new file or, or resave. If you are using a database program, there will be a re-index command that's exactly for this. This is, this is what happens all the time. Um, just export it out. Uh, if it's Excel, export it out as a uh, comma-separated uh, text file and re-import it in. And uh, you'll get the, get the size back down. But as you use it, it's going to blow it up again. Hey, good, the good news is hard drive space is pretty cheap these days. We're talking pennies a gigabyte. So I can't imagine that with eight, even with 8 million phone numbers that you're not going to, you're going you're gonna to run out of space. Just get a, you can always get a bigger hard drive. Henry in Los Alamitos, California. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, hey, Henry. Hi, Leo. Um, I have a Motorola Photon. Um, I like it a lot. Um, but there are two things I, I need to know about it. Uh, first, uh, can I and should I um, upgrade to ice cream sandwich? And second, um, how do I use it uh, in other countries on a GSM network? It's the CDMA phone. Right. Uh, ice cream sandwich is the current latest version of Android 4.0, and almost everybody uh, is still on gingerbread, sometimes even earlier. Uh, Motorola has put out a list of phones that it plans to upgrade. You're on 2.3 right now. You're on gingerbread 2.3 on the Photon. Uh, I did not see the Photon on that list, but I think they're, they're planning to upgrade all of them. But they're not giving hard and fast dates. They're saying, eh, sometime this year, that kind of thing. They'll upgrade. I, I do think Ice Cream Sandwich is an improvement. In uh, many respects, the apps, some of the apps are a lot better. The camera app is a lot better. The Gmail is a lot better. The calendar app, the contacts app. One of the things I don't like about Ice Cream Sandwich isn't going to be a problem on the Photon. Ice Cream Sandwich is designed for hardware not to have any buttons. So your Photon, like most Android phones, has four buttons along the bottom, four capacitive right. buttons. You know, there's home, back, menu, and search. Um, right. With Ice Cream Sandwich... 
they wouldn't need to include those buttons, but they're already there. They will be supported in Ice Cream Sandwich. So that's, I don't, I think it's bad user interface design to move buttons around. And what Ice Cream Sandwich does is it lets each program position those buttons anywhere on the screen that it wants. And I think that's a huge mistake because it means I'm spending time in every single app on my Galaxy Nexus saying, now where'd the menu go? Oh, it's there. So I, I think it should always be in the same spot. It's just my personal opinion. But in every other respect, I think Ice Cream Sandwich is a big improvement. So, yes, you will want to upgrade it when it comes out. Okay. Well, now, that's, that's... as for the CDMA phone, uh, generally speaking, uh, CDMA phones do not work worldwide. But you're lucky because the Photon is a world phone. Which... Right. I, I can put a SIM card in it. Right. Um... So it will work uh, worldwide. You'll have to get a SIM card. You probably have to go back to Sprint. Uh, is it is it Sprint that you have? It is Sprint. Yeah, yeah. you. Pro I would guess. I know. I don't know about Sprint. I know Verizon does this with the iPhone, which is also a world phone. You go back to them and say, "I want to use this as a world phone." You pay a fee. They put a SIM card in it. Yeah. No. Supposedly, uh, it's unlocked to use on GSM networks uh, outside of the United States. Oh, that's even better. That's yeah, even yeah. better because that means you could go to Germany or Spain or Ecuador and buy, you know, go to the post office or a phone company and buy a SIM card and you'll have a local number. Right. But usually when, when you have a, a SIM card like that, uh, there's information on it besides the number uh, that the phone uses to build its menu. So it would have menus in the local language, I suppose. And, uh, oh, that's interesting. I don't think uh, so. I think on a world phone, it will ignore any uh, any locale stuff on the SIM card, and you'll continue to it'll honor the locale settings in your settings. Okay, okay, okay. That would be good. Yeah, and it would also ignore any uh, any numbers that I may have stored on that SIM card, right? Because otherwise, it would conflict with the contact. That I have no, the way it does is it merges the contact data in the SIM card with contact data on the phone. Uh, and there's a okay. setting to not use contact data from the SIM card. That's correct. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. So that should work. Yeah, May Android I? does very well worldwide. I, I, th I mean, I, I haven't used this Photon, but I would imagine this. They are selling it as a world phone, so I would imagine that, in fact, yeah, yeah. Yeah. it would work uh, fine. It works very well in every other way. I'm very happy with it. Good. Um, one thing, if I may ask you one more question. Sure. Um, uh, I cannot get it to transfer the contact to, to my car. Uh, Bluetooth works fine. I'm using it right now. Yeah, that, okay, so... I understand, and I, I do the same thing uh, with my, I have Ford Sync, same idea. You'll When you bond the phone, when you pair the phone with the car, it then downloads the contacts so that you can use the car's interface on the phone. But that's very phone-specific, and it sounds like there's just an incompatibility. Uh, I, I've noticed some phones work, some phones don't. And you're kind of stuck when that's the case. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888 Ask Leo. That's the number. Last segment of the Tech Guy Show. Don't forget, though, we continue to talk geeky all week long on the Twit Network. Twitnetcast Network, T-W-I-T dot TV. That's this show, but 29 other shows as well, covering every facet of tech in absolute geeky um, absurdity. The New York Times uh, once said uh, that we were over-involved. Over yes, I am <laughs> with tech. Uh, Jason in uh, Boulder, Colorado. Hello, Jason. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hey, Leo. Thanks for taking my call. Well, you're very welcome. Thanks for calling. Sure. Um, I'd also like to, uh, to thank your screener for being so empathic with my particular... Oh, Gina's great, isn't she? Yeah, we love Gina. She is. Yeah. She is. Very sincere. So my problem is I bought a MacBook Pro um, probably about six months ago and very happy with it. I love it. And um, my problem is there was something caught in the uh, headphone jack. And um, uh, when I took it to Apple, they weren't a lot of help. Um, I'm a veterinarian and I had some tiny uh, uh, hemostats, so I was able to pull out what was in there. But now the problem is that the external speakers don't work. Oh, no. So the Apple Store, they what did they do? They just looked at it and went, huh? 
Um, kind of. Uh, when they call, they're, they're great. You, if you're online and you ask for a call right away, they call you. Yeah. They set up an appointment. They oh, oh okay. So this is phone support. Oh, it, it was. Yeah. yeah. Did then, you try bringing it to an Apple store? Because I think phone support, there's not much they could do if there's a pebble. They, what are they, they going to do? They're going to say, take it to a store because we can't touch it. Sure. No, good point. Uh, oh, I should have explained uh, the, the phone support set up an appointment. In oh, person. okay. So you did bring it in. And then the genius, what did he say? <laughs> he said that he didn't have pliers small enough to, to get in there. He just he, he shined you on. He did. Well, he that's did. not nice. It's, first of all, it's under warranty. Um, right. So I would take it back now. Don't mention the pebble. Just say hey, it's not working. Oh, okay. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, it's not working, and it's under warranty. And uh, now, th here's the deal with the geniuses at the Apple Store. They have a lot of leeway. Uh, and this is something, I, and I've corresponded anonymously with a number of people who work in this uh, position. They have a ton of leeway. If they like you, they could give you a new computer. I mean, literally, they have that much leeway. They could say, oh, no problem. Give it to me. Here's a fresh, brand new one. So uh -huh. so I would be very nice. <laughs> be very, very, very nice. And if and don't lie to them. If they ask you what happened, say, you know, there was something in there. I kind of, I took it out, and uh, now it won't work. Because I think what's happened is it's it's shorted something, or it's broken something on that jack. And and frankly, it's not something you can easily fix. Uh, yeah. They they probably are going to want to replace. Get ready for this: the logic board, which is a expensive replacement. Do you have Apple Care? I oh I do actually. Oh beauty! When you have Apple Care, they're really much nicer. Um, uh, so what I would suggest is, yeah, don't you know? Unless they ask, you don't have to bring up the hemostat. <laughs> okay. Don't, I wouldn't bring that up unless they ask. Uh, they, uh, it, but say I don't know what happened. Uh, it's not working anymore. It's 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 absolutely. You've got Apple Care, so it's absolutely under warranty. It would be even if you didn't. But Apple Care makes them nicer. Uh, be very nice to them. Bring them chocolates, whatever it is that you need to make them happy. Go on a day that they're not insanely busy if you can. And the the absolute, uh, I would absolutely be certain that they're going to replace that or fix it on the spot. And by the way, back up your data before you go in. Oh, okay. Because How if, well, yeah, you just get an external hard drive or something and put your, you should have had carbonite, right? But I'll tell you about that in a second. Oh, right. um, well, now, and by the way, Dave McDee is saying, Leo, you said don't lie to him, but you're also saying, say, you'd, I'm just saying don't volunteer any information. If he says, sure. hey, it looks like somebody's been digging around in here, say, yeah, there was something stuck in there, I removed it. Don't lie. Don't say, oh, I don't know. But, uh, right. but, okay. but don't, vol I wouldn't volunteer anything unless he asks you specifically. You don't want to raise any red. Flags. You know, people, for instance, if you drop your phone in the toilet, tell them it's, it got wet because they can tell. There's a little <laughs> strip in there. But I don't think you need to overshare. Got it. If you know what I mean. Don't lie, but don't overshare. And that, frankly, uh, Apple's very good about this, but the genius has immense leeway. And they also have to kind of justify it. They, if a genius is always giving away a lot of stuff, they're going to have to justify it to their boss. So they, they, they want to protect themselves. But, but I would say, they abs first of all, they should fix it, period. Uh, okay. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't know what that pebble was. What do you think it was? You know, I have I have no idea, but it kind of uh, crumpled. Um, my headphones, you know, the jacks were were completely. Yeah. So I mean, if they if they wanted to be um, if they wanted to be a sticklers about it, they could say, "Well, look, you damaged it." Right. So um, yeah. So, uh, but you don't know what happened, uh, and um, I think they should just fix it. They really they really want to fix it. Give them a reason to. Okay. Excellent. All right. Thank you so much. Sure, you're welcome. I've. This is, by the way, we were talking about why support is so bad. Uh, this is, uh, conversely, why Apple charges so much. Uh, you, pay, you pay, in most cases, twice as much for the hardware when you buy a Mac. Well, a lot of that is support, and they do give you very, very good support. When you go in there to the Apple store in particular... Uh, they they'll they'll I've heard so many great tales of of support. Now don't go in there all angry, because um, they have leeway and they can they can also not support you. <laughs> but in general, their support's excellent, and uh, you should get you should get. Uh, I've I've heard some amazing stories. I mean, just swapping stuff, 
Just saying, yeah, well, hey, it doesn't work. No problem. We'll take that back. It's kind of amazing. But again, they have they some you know you, they can also just ignore you. And if you have Apple Care, you, you you should get more leeway because basically you threw your money away, and they ought to respect that. <laughs> Jenny West L A. Hello, Jenny Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so I'm so glad that you're over involved. And that, so there's an expert for. <laughs> I'm obsessed. Obsessive compulsive coverage of technology. That's me. Gosh, I'm so grateful for your program. I do it. I read manuals so you don't have to, Jenny. God, and interpret <laughs> too. Thank you. You're very kind. Thank you. Um, I ju we just returned an iPad too because of the news of the iPad three coming out. Is is the iPad three more expensive than the iPad two? You know? I, I think you were a little premature returning it because you we you know it's all rumors. Apple has not said a word. Now, no. I feel very confident that it will be March 7th, but Apple has not said anything yet. We don't know anything about it, and we especially don't know the price yet. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. I could tell you what I think, but okay. understand, Apple's not saying. And I, boy, if they did, they would. I'd be the last person they'd tell. Well, I, I heard a couple of the reports besides from you. It's, well, you know, the rumors are pretty strong that March 7th there will be an announcement. Probably within 10 days they will have a product. We we all expect it will be a retina display. I think, feel fairly confident that's the case. That means instead of 1024 by 768, it'll be 2048 by 1536. It'll be much higher resolution, which means it'll look much better. No one has said prices, but my guess would be Apple typically does not raise prices. So I would guess it'll be the same pricing as with the existing iPad. That's my guess. Leo Laporte, the tech guy.